Games Lifestyle Innovation Thank you everyone for joining us today for our monthly webinar. The topic for today is a day in the life of a Blaze ET user. And Dave is going to take us through what his typical day looks like since he is now a Blaze ET user. And so he's going to take us through some of the activities that he does on a daily basis. And he travels a lot, so he'll cover some of that. He's a fun guy, so he'll cover some fun stuff. So Dave, I'm going to let you go ahead and take over. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in this afternoon. And great to be here. Uh, it's right before school starting. I guess for some of you guys, school has already started. Uh, so thank you for taking time out of your day in order to uh, to share some time with us about the Blaze ET. A lot of you guys are already familiar with HIMS, so we won't focus too much time on the, uh, the Who is HIMS slide, but we are located in Austin, Texas. Our phone number is 888-520-4467. Our email address is uh, info at hymns inccom or you can always uh, send information about webinars to webinars at hymns inccom and we're located in Austin, Texas. So, sort of the, the idea behind the, the Blaze, and I guess to give you a brief description of the Blaze before we get into sort of an average day with it, uh, the Blaze is about is about it's about the size of an old sort of flip phone, a little bit smaller than that maybe has stereo speakers. Uh, there are six buttons that are surrounding sort of a cursor cross, and those six buttons will allow you to do things such as go into the file manager, which is the middle top uh, button. Uh, the left top button is information. The right top button is OCR. And the bottom three buttons from left to right are cancel or close. Uh, button that sort of works like an alt menu and a review slash repeat button. And then below that, you have a number pad that is used for writing data, such as when you're trying to download books uh, or magazines from Bookshare or from Bard. Uh, the number pad has a number of other features. There are some shortcuts that you can use uh, that are announced in the menu as we go along. Uh, we do have detailed uh, instructions in the quick user guide and this webinar isn't so much set up as a how-to as much as it is to show you some of the cool things that it can do, but I did want to give you an idea of sort of the way that it looks. Our first slide and what happens in Dave's day, it's uh, the alarm would go off and I would be awake and at this point I'm sort of frantically running around trying to figure out what that awful noise is. Uh, and the first thing that I would probably do after getting up would be to switch over to the radio so that I could listen to my favorite morning personality. The radio, if I wanted to get to the radio, I would simply go to the file manager by pressing that top middle key that we discussed a little file while manager. ago. And from the file manager, I would use my arrow keys. Media player. Book reader. Radio. And from the radio now, if I just hit enter, it will go to the FM radio. I don't even know if this is on the station at the moment. No, so let's find one. It's not your average quarterback. So here we go. We've got sports happening on the radio. None of that guy. Um, but you get the point that you, uh, we do have a built-in FM radio so that you would be able to turn on your morning personality or whatever as you're getting your coffee and getting ready for the day. Uh, and keep in mind that you'd be able to use stereo speakers for that. So that's always pretty cool. Uh, and I have, for this presentation, I have the Blaze hooked up to a Bose SoundLink uh, speaker to give it that much more of a cool uh, sound to it. So, so far on the day, we've gotten, we've had, had the Blaze ET wake us up and we've turned on the radio to get started for the day. Uh, and before heading out the door, it's time to get some books for the upcoming airplane. And so again, we're gonna to go to the file manager with the top middle button. And from the file manager, we're going to hit the down arrow. Media player. Uh, let's give you a little bit more volume for that to make sure that you can hear it okay. Guide, guide, guide voice, volume 13. What, where I am at the moment is that I'm, I'm inside a bookshare. I can type the, the name of a, like the name of a book. 
So we'll type in baseball. Mm -hmm. Baseball sounds mm -hmm. like a good thing to listen to mm -hmm. books about on an airplane. A, B, B. And the way that I'm doing this, a. I'm using a. the number pad. It's sort of like you used J. to use for texting a. on your phone. L. So for that last L, we're going to hit J. the number five L. three times because that was in the, because it's J, K, and L on your phone. L. And now we'll hit Info enter. Between the numbers one of 392 list items. Wow, and there's 392 books on Bookshare that has baseball as part of it. That's kind of scary. And then I could just use my left and right arrows to go in between books at this point. Baseball two of 392 list items. It ain't over till it's over three of 392 list items. Anything that has Yogi Berra has got to be interesting. So all I have to do at this point to download this book is press the enter key. The tail dialog. Download book combo box. And now it's downloading. So it's not a whole lot to download a book on Bookshare or Bard. Uh, Bard would be very much the same, uh, the same idea, except that it's going to take me. Now it's going to ask me if I want to play the book. Notice. And then it just starts to read the book. I keep over. Baseball Perspectives. The Baseball Perspectives Annual, 1996 present. And I just hit pause so that at that point you were just hearing the acapella voice Heather read the book. Um, and it would, of course, start with the notice that all Bookshare books start with. Uh, and I can use my arrow keys to be able to navigate past all of that stuff and get right to the book with no problem. Barred books are going to be very much the same way. They are going to take longer to download. And understand that we are downloading directly to the Blaze at this point. We're using a wireless network. So it's, uh, it, it, you know, the, the, the days of having to hook the, the Blaze up to the computer pretty much are only there if you want them to be there. So we can spend more time on that, but I don't want to get hung up on that as well. At least gives you some idea of how this is going to work. And to know, so now continuing through my day, um, I also had a list of stuff not to forget in the Blaze Recordings section. So we're going to go to the Blaze Recordings. Blaze, headphones for running, et cetera. And so that monotone, jabbering voice you were hearing is me going through a whole list of stuff not to forget. You'll notice that the quality is pretty good. We'll play that again for you. Don't forget Smart Beetle, eBot Advanced, eBot Pro, or else since U2, yeah, yeah, U2 yeah. Mini, U2 QWERTY, Candy, Blaze, Headphones for Running, et cetera. That's enough of me. So you do get the idea that the recording quality is quite good on the Blaze. Now, again, we have this plugged into an external speaker so that you can hear it better over the net, but it's very clear. Uh, the microphone is very good for near or for distance view, and you do have some control over the levels of the microphone. So now I've got my list of stuff to make sure that I haven't forgotten, and I'm out the door, and I'm on the plane. And so for the plane, it's easy enough. We've got music we can listen to. And to get to music, we can simply go to our file manager by pressing function key one. Uh, or actually not oh, function key one, the, the, the top middle key. I'm thinking of a totally different product with function key one. Uh, and then we're going to arrow down to media player. Media player. And all I have to do for the media player is hit the right arrow, and it will start playing the last track I was listening to. And I'm not sure how much you guys could or could not hear earlier, but what I was trying to show is that we do the the, the music part of the blaze and how equalizers are not always particularly friendly uh, on touch screens, which is one of the things that I really like about having uh, with the blaze. Um, something else that's really unique to the Blaze, uh, lunchtime, so it's time to use the calculator to figure out the tip. So we're going to go back to the main menu, file manager. Uh, which is our file manager, and we're going to go into our utilities menu. Options, external apps, utilities, pull down. And I can Ready. go into my utilities menu with enter. And now, once I'm in my utilities menu, color reader, record, color reader, memo, calculator. Now, the, the memo we never really touch on in this uh, 
presentation, but the memo is pretty cool. You could actually use that little number pad to write short notes in the memo feature, but we'll go into the calculator. Calculator, zero. And it's just a basic calculator, so I could write, you know, two. Two, zero, zero. Uh, two. Zero. And now let's see what we want to do. Let's see what we want. Menu to do. opened. One plus dialog box. Two minus dialog box. Three multiply by dialog box. So we're going to hit enter on multiply. multiply. We'll hit 20. Two. Zero. Three. Four hundred. And we did 20 times 20 equals 400. That's just sort of an example of some of the things that you can do here. It's just a very basic calculator, nothing fancy. I think on here that I had had that I was going to be uh, doing the percentage uh, percentage of a of a tip, but you get the basic idea of how the calculator would work. Uh, it's worth pointing out that if I was going to use this in a restaurant, I would probably use headphones. The last thing I want is someone across the room being able to hear the tip that I'm trying to figure out, right? So now it's later on in the day. Uh, it's leisure time, which means it's time for a, a few podcasts and some web radio. And our podcasts, we have a number of built-in podcast feeds, or you can add them. Uh, so we'll go to our podcast section on the Blaze. And we will do that by going to the file manager by pressing the top middle key. And then we are going to press the down arrow until we get to podcast. Calculator. Oh, here we go. Utilities, pull down. Library services, podcasts. And under podcasts, if I hit my right arrow. Creating feed list. It creates feed list creation complete. And this AC is the 360 audio, one of 23 list items. There are 23 that come already built on board. I'm going to go ahead and arrow down to go to a uh, different podcast. All songs consider two of 23 list at America's Test Kitchen Radio, three of 23 list at Billboard.com Pop Shop Podcast, four of 23 list item. Live Vargas audio featuring the BP cast. Technology news, interviews, and more five of 23 list items. Now, I'm partial to the Blind Bargains podcast, and I'm partial for very vain reasons because I know that I happen to be on it. Um, so if I hit the right arrow, it gives me all the current feeds that are available on the Blind Bargains podcast. Blind Bargains cast 26 trainers, the and a squad not downloaded one of 50 list items. Blind Bargains cast 25 Cortana, Earl Grey, huh? Summer Convention Deal Powerful to Lift Magnification. And so here's the Summer Convention Powerful uh, eBot Magnification. And if I just press enter, I would start actually listening to the podcast. Checking the download file. Play. And that's the beginning of the podcast. It's blindbargain.com coverage of NFC 2015. Brought to you by him. And that's enough of that. It's brought to you by him. Um, and that was actually a podcast that wasn't me. Uh, that's our, my friend Michael Rowley, who did an awesome job doing a podcast on the eBot. Um, our web radio works very much the same way. You can, you've got databases, a database of internet radio stations. And I noticed that in my haste to zoom through things, I didn't show you one of the coolest features that the Blaze has, which is a built-in camera for optical character recognition. And further back up on the slides, we were talking about scanning a menu. Uh, and it just so happens that I have a menu here that I picked up from a restaurant down the street earlier that is just on a little mimeograph piece of paper. It doesn't look like they really put a whole lot of thought into uh, producing this thing. But let's see how it scans. It's from a place called the take Pie Kitchen. So we're going to take a picture of the menu, and we're going to show you the OCR features of the Blaze. OCR analysis. It's thinking, and hopefully we'll get a good scan and we'll get some stuff back. OCR analysis completed. Two, I, three, ah, uh, four sandwiches. Here we go. Choose a bread, see a bottle, white tea, nibble, recommended, see a bottle, wheat, wheat, marble, rye, white tea, turkey, and for some. Ham club roasted turkey, tavern ham, 
bacon, Vermont cheddar cheese with Ramallah dressing. With Ramallah dressing. Bacon, so the very top was sort of a graphic bread. that it didn't like. Bacon, Vermont cheddar cheese with ranch dressing. Percent three chicken salad with provolone cheese dressed. So it didn't do too bad. It at least gives you an idea of what's on the menu. This particular menu doesn't have pricing on it, which seems a bit odd to me. Um, maybe they change the prices day by day. But you do at least get an idea of how uh, the blades can be used as a camera for optical character recognition. We also do have batch scanning capabilities so that if I wanted to scan several pages at once, I could do that. Um, and the blaze would just take a picture every couple of seconds of the next page and it would just keep scanning. The last thing that I want to show you as far as the, the blaze with the camera, uh, we have on our slide that I'm trying to lay out clothing, uh, uh, cl clothing for tomorrow and we're going to use the colored identifier. And I am going to walk across the room and grab a shirt that I brought specifically for the color identifier purposes here. It's one of our HIMSS shirts. You've got to make sure that you're going to look like all the other HIMSS folks if we're at a conference. So I can go back to my utilities and I'm going to get to my utilities by hitting the top middle button, just like we've done all day. External apps. Utilities. Pull down. Record. Color reader. And in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and we'll open this up for questions. If you have questions about the blaze, here comes the scary part of the day. We're going to unmute folks and it's going to be turned over and it's going to be wild. We are in the process, and I, I, I keep saying that and it does keep getting closer. We are in the process of doing product videos and we really should have videos in the relatively near future for a lot of products, not only the blaze, uh, but also for the Braille Sense. Uh, the Braille Edge, et cetera. Someone wants to know what is the MSRP on the screen, Dave. I'm showing both both models. So if you want to get pricing for both, maybe. The Blaze ET, which is the model we've been looking at today, is seven hundred and ninety-five dollars MSRP. The Blaze E Z, which is a, a model that doesn't have the number pad, uh it's a little bit of a simpler user interface. It doesn't have some of the features that the ET has, such as the calculator. Um Run $695. We had another question uh, from Ruth. She doesn't have a microphone. Um, she said she doesn't understand quite how the music works. The slide said enjoying equalizer presets, but I don't know what that means. What it means is that there are presets in the equalizer. If I go to the music section of the Blaze, uh, let me plug it back into the speaker here and I'll show you. Now, I can go to the file manager just like we did before. Media player. And from the media player, I go to the right. You have music that starts to play. Now at this point, we're going to pause the music. I can go into the menus here. Menu opened. Zero, explore mode. One, equalizer settings. And if I go into equalizer settings. Equalizer settings, normal combo box. I have a combo box where I can choose normal. Classic. Classic. Dance. Dance. Jazz. Jazz, rock, pop, etc., and it changes how the music will sound in your headphones. Now, realistically, you probably would not notice a change over the, the internet connection because audio is not fabulous over the net. But it's literally equalizer settings that would be ideal for specific types of music, such as classical music, rock music, pop music, dance, etc. So hopefully that makes it a little bit clearer for you. She had a follow-up question, um, so what's normal <laughs> with the well, audio? It's pretty much just a flat-lined equalization <laughs> with not a whole lot done to jazz it up, uh, with not a whole lot of specific types of the music being emphasized. And then uh, Mike wants to know, what is the total storage capacity? Total storage capacity on board is 12 gigabytes. You can also use a secure digital card. That secure digital card, we recommend that you don't go above 32 gigs. I've had a 64 gig card in mine with no problem, uh, but sticking with what the, the folks in the factory recommend, I'd say probably that your, your wise is to be sticking to 32 gigs or smaller, although I have not followed those guidelines. I have a question. Bring it on. I'm wondering um, if you use the 
if you have a dictionary, is the dictionary, are the dictionary and the thesaurus dictionary, are they two different entities? They are one and the same, and it's a dictionary and thesaurus. Uh, we do have a dictionary. It is a $30 add-on. Um, it's quite easy to use. If I go to the utilities oh, menu. Pull down. So if you have the thesaurus oh, dictionary, you don't need the additional dictionary then? Correct. Okay. And then the sense dictionary is just an option off the utilities menu, so then I can go into the dictionary and I can type a word. But in this case, I could write in the word frog or something and look it up. Because it shows them listed, I think it's two different options. That's what's confusing. Right. No, it's, it's absolutely different than a dictionary, but in this case, it's a dictionary and thesaurus. And then as we have the Blaze ET and then we had the Blaze EZ before that, maybe you don't know the answer to this, but will the ET be able to be upgraded if you come out with more features or would we need to buy whatever the new thing is that has those new features in it? Good question. And there are several answers to that. There will be new features to both the ET and the EZ. There will be new features that are not there now. Those will be free upgrades. You will be able to upgrade online. Uh, you go to the utilities menu, and if you're hooked up to the Wi-Fi network, you can just you, you can just upgrade your unit online. Um, so that any features that we come out with for the Blaze ET or the EZ are going to be a free upgrade. Great. I think also it's important to mention too that there may be updates to the Blaze ET that don't apply to the Blaze EZ, um, such as uh, the add-on dictionary and things like that. The, the the ET is is is, is going to be the, the the more feature rich of the two. And then Dave, Irene wants to know: Can you show us how the Blaze reads email? Does it do email? The only way it's going to, the only way that it's going to do email, it will not download email. The only way that it's going to read an email is if you save an email from your computer onto an SD card or onto the Blaze and read it as a file. So don't get too excited. <laughs> Yeah, that would be awfully cool. So are there any other questions out there while well, we've got everyone unmuted? I have two things. One of the things that I was wondering is you just brought up the dictionary, and I was just wanting to make me think, uh, how how much on average do you sell these these uh, blazes to, like, schools and things like that? I can imagine it would be infinitely popular in an education setting and so forth. You know, it's, we've had a lot of interest from schools. Realistically, ask me in a couple of months, the Blaze ET really came out of the spring, and we sort of missed that buying cycle for schools. Oh, We're just hitting yeah. the buying cycle again. So ask me, in a, ask me in a couple of months. But it has proven to be very – schools have been very interested. I can imagine that. Yeah. The other thing was just playing about email. Now, since it has Wi-Fi capability – I mean, would there be any reason in the in the near future I could see where it would read where it would read um, download emails to an SD card? But it seems like it would be a not too big of a jump for it to possibly be able to connect to uh, using some sort of I don't know whether it has a browser. Or not. I wasn't here long enough to see that, but if it did, that you want to conceivably make it read um, you know, Gmail, for example, over the web or something like that. I yeah. do not have any idea how feasible that would be. I know that okay. it has not been discussed in the future, yeah. uh, in the immediate future as far as feature sets. Okay. Uh, it does not have a browser. Uh, there would be a lot of, you, you pretty much have to build a browser for it for it to be able to do that. So I, Yeah, but not I, I, a keyboard and such, yeah. Right. So I, I don't think you're going to see being able to download email on, on this device. It's not oh, okay. outside the realm of possibility, but I think what's going to happen is, like, my iPhone right now is so full of email, I can't do anything else on it. I think the danger is if you put email onto this device and it's downloading email, you're not going to have room left for the books and stuff, which is the reason you exactly. keep it. 
That's true. And then as far as the popularity with the schools, I think the schools are already buying things like our book sense and the picture reader. Um, so I, I don't see why um, many, many schools wouldn't see the added component of OCR. I mean, it does all the same things that the book sense and the picture reader do. Um, well, 99% of them, plus it's got mm -hmm. the color teller and plus the dictionary, plus the OCR, which is priceless. If you can go into a library and snap a picture of a book, of an encyclopedia, and I'm hoping that they'll pick up on that because it's it's only slightly yeah. more. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So I'm going to pop the slide up. We do have webinars once a month, typically on the second Tuesday. Um, some of the things not listed on the website right now are actually some of the more exciting. Uh, well, the more fun. They're not more exciting, but the more fun topics. We're going to have a webinar that is essentially a virtual party that we're inviting all of our customers to join us online for, and we'll have games and trivia, and we'll be giving away prizes and just a super, super fun thing. So that'll be coming up in December, and I don't think we've announced it yet, but make sure you're on the email list so you'll get the invite when that's ready. Well, thanks, everyone, for sticking by us through some of the audio hiccups. It is a new platform, and this is uh, the lesser of 10 evils, <laughs> basically. So um, if you have any feedback as far as um, getting connected, using your microphone, all of that, we would love to hear back from you. Um, you can email webinars at hims h i m s dash inc inc.com. Dave, you want to wrap it up? We look forward to seeing you next month. Uh, so we'll we'll see you about a month from today. So thank you guys very much. You know, you can always e uh, email me at dave at hims-inc.com. If you have specific questions about the blaze that I didn't cover here, feel free to send me an email. I'll be happy to answer them. And thank you guys again for tuning in and have a great day.